Because the Spirit of God in us searches all things. And you know, we are able to know the things that God has given us freely. But the world cannot. Look down to verses 14. The Bible says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Do you know, salvation by faith alone, which is eternal, is foolishness to many of the false prophets? Not even many, all of them. You know, um, I don't know if you've been raised the way I've been raised. You know, I've been raised with a heaven or hell consciousness. How I many of you have been raised with a heaven or hell consciousness? I've been raised with a heaven. So when somebody dies, I don't know if you're like me, the first natural reaction in my mind is, I wonder where their soul is. Because the idea of heaven and hell has been stripped from the consciousness of the church with, with false teachings such as the gospel of inclusion and others who actually remove the idea of hell. The idea of hell is being assaulted even in the Christian church, not just the gospel, but also the idea of hell with false doctrines called one saved, always saved. I mean to tell you, one saved, always saved is a false doctrine. It's not one saved, always saved, it's one saved, stay saved. Stay saved. By doing what? By walking right. That's not legalism, that's holiness. Good, <coughs> Good morning, excuse me. Um, I was watching a, a streamer last night and he was going off on one, and rightfully so. I mean, he was getting very emotional as to the common mistake that <clears throat> Christians believe. They actually believe that they're going to heaven, despite the fact they're continuing in sin, which is it's heresy. It's the opposition to what's um, stated in the Bible and what's necessary for a Christian to actually um, go through the trials and tribulations, because he that shall endure till the end shall be saved. Okay, if you're not enduring anything, and you're enjoying your life as best as you can, you're going out on weekends, clubbing, sleeping around, um, generally living like a pagan, an ungodly person, you won't make it to heaven. That's, um, that's the promise of the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible says the opposite to what once saved, always saved people believe. Peace and blessings, peace and blessings, smart the messenger, we're back in another video. This one's going to be about once saved, always saved, is it biblical? I get people asking this questions all the time, and I'm going to be showing you guys the dangers of once saved, always saved, but before I get on with it, I'm going to share you guys, when I first heard of once saved, always saved, it was back in 2019, 2018, around that time, and it didn't align with me, even back when I was a sheep, when I was simple-minded, I'm a shepherd now, but back when I was a sheep, I was simple-minded and was more easily deceived by false teachers, false prophets. So I always made sure to read my Bible for myself, which I advise all you guys to do as well, to make sure whatever you're learning is aligned with God's word. So people would tell me, oh, no, um, you know, you don't have to be holy. You don't have to, you know, be, you know, be fired up. Because once saved, always saved, there's no one who's on fire for Christ that's preaching once saved, always saved. I'm going to let you know this right now. Not one person who preaches once saved, always saved is on fire for Christ, okay? And what that, what that, would teach me when I first heard it is that, you know, I don't have to live a life of repentance. I could just live however I want because Jesus, Jesus did it, uh, died on the cross for me. Eternal security would conflict with what we believe as Catholics. And I would argue it conflicts with what the Bible teaches as well. I'll share one passage with you that perhaps you've examined before, but maybe not within this context. And that's Galatians chapter five, verse four. Paul tells the Galatians, you are severed from Christ, you who would be just justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace, for through the Spirit by faith we wait for the hope of righteousness. Now there are three elements, three details here that are relevant to our conversation here. Number one, Paul says the Galatians are severed from Christ. Now if you think about that, brother, what does that imply? That implies that the Galatians, the Christians in Galatia, were once in Christ. And what does it mean to be in Christ? That means to be saved. You're a saved individual if you're in Christ as a member of his mystical body with grace dwelling within your soul. But Paul says that they're severed from Christ. So they once were in Christ and thereby saved, but now because they're going back to the old law and trying to be justified by it, they're no longer in Christ and thereby no longer saved. 
That is why they have all this boldness of saying that the gospel of once saved, always saved is from hell. Because it's foolishness unto them. They don't really understand how someone can just go to heaven freely without being a good person. So if you want to please them, you have to tell them, be a good person. Keep the law. Do A, B, C, D. And to them, that is the wisdom they want to hear. They will even invite you to preach in their church. What is the message unto us who have been given these things? What is the message of Apostle John unto us through the Spirit of God because he has addressed unto us saying, unto you that believe. What is the message? This is the message. Look down to verse 13, 1 John 5. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. This is the message. That you may know that you have what? Eternal life. Keep not. He didn't say you will have. No. He's saying that you may know you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, if you were to consider and investigate this statement, Apostle John by the Spirit of God does not want us to doubt anyhow on matters eternal salvation. And look, I don't believe that things are just in the Bible coincidentally. No, I believe God has a purpose as to why everything is put in the Bible. And I thank God that this is in the Bible because if it was in, not in the Bible, then that means even we among believers would be doubting. And so this is an assurance for you and me that we have what? Eternal life. Presently, as I'm speaking now, Apostle John wants me to understand that because I believe I have eternal life. As I'm speaking unto you now, in me there is a temporary life. I breathe oxygen in carbon dioxide out. There's one day that I will die. The last breath that I'll breathe, the temporary life will be gone. But because of the promise of Jesus Christ, the hope that we have in God, who has promised us eternal life and cannot lie, Jesus says, though I die, I will live again. Why? Because of the eternal life. Look down to verses 10. You are in 1 John chapter 5. Look back to verses 10. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son of God has a witness in himself. Who is the witness in you? The Spirit of God. That is the witness in you. The one who searched all things. The one who has revealed unto you everything. Made plain everything unto you. Up to a point of you knowing the things which the Lord has given you freely. The Bible says he that believeth on the Son of God has a witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record. That God has given to us what? Eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has what? Has life. And he that has not the son of God has not what? The truth. This is the truth. If you believe on the son, you have eternal life. Look. Look. Even if you are to read to those of the spirit of error a hundred times this assurance, they will not believe. In fact, they will begin dodging, shifting God, you know, bringing in, you know, stories, you know, going up and down trying to prove that, prove a point. But when we come back to the scriptures, the one who has written unto us calling us little children, he says we may know that our sins have been forgiven and that we may know we have eternal life and if you believe in the Son of God, you have eternal life. That guy who does not believe in the Son of God has no life.
but that guy shall experience the wrath of God in hell. So you can see that the sermon today is basically focusing on the matter of eternal life because I kid you not, days go by and we will continue having people come in our church but if we'll have 90 people who believe that they have eternal life, we might have five people who still have a problem about that. Because the concept of eternal life and sinning and, you know, the seed of God in us who does not sin and us, you know, confessing our sins, unto them is like they don't really understand. But I believe that amongst us that are seated here, no one is confused about this subject. And it's very clear. If you believe on the Son, you have eternal life because that eternal life is inside the Son. Now the problem is this. For that guy who claims he believes in the Son but does not believe, he has eternal life. Is he really believing on the, the true Son? No. Because those who believe on the true Son of God, the very first package of the gift that they receive is eternal. For the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. So we were to be paid. We were to go to pay the penalty of our sins in hell. But then God gave us the gift. So not unless you believe that you've been given the gift, you'll still go to hell. Because you know what? He's saying, we that believe, these things that I read unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. 